Hello there, this is Coach Ikram, and welcome to our sixth and final video on the thermochemistry unit. This video is going to be on the heat in phase change diagrams. First thing you need to uh, be aware of is these similar terms we've done over them before. Um, these are all the different phase changing actions. So you've got melting and freezing, evaporation and condensation, and then sublimation and deposition. Make sure you know the definitions of those. The important thing to remember when you are undergoing a phase change is that the temperature of what you're changing, oops, sorry about that. The temperature of what you're changing does not change at all while the phase is changing. So for example, if you put water on to boil and that water is boiling, it stays at exactly 100 degrees Celsius. It never gets any hotter than that until all the water has boiled off. Okay, so some definitions, just to kind of make sure we're all on the same page here. Sublimation is going to be the change of a solid to a gas going to skip the liquid phase, and deposition is going to be the opposite of that. Some examples of that would be iodine, cube shrinkage, or freeze drying something, or freezer burn. Those are two that generally people tend to forget, so just kind of a reminder of those two definitions. Some other things you do need to know to do these specific type of problems um, is that the specific heat of water is 4.18 joules over grams degree Celsius or 100 calorie or 1.0 calories um, over grams degree Celsius. Make sure you know that value. And the specific heat of ice is going to be 2.1 and the specific heat of steam is going to be 2.0. Make sure you have those values written down somewhere so you can use them as a reference as we do these problems. So this chart is a really good reference to write down. Um, you don't have to have it, I mean, you will have to have it memorized. You'll never have to reproduce it. But it gives you a good look at what's happening when you're going between liquid water, ice and frost, water vapor. And it also includes plasma up there at the top with ionization and deionization just for your reference. Okay. So again, this is just kind of a reminder. We have it right here just so it's easy reference. Specific heat of water and the specific heat of ice and steam. So if we're looking at a graph <clears throat> for these particular type of problems, this is a phase change diagram down here. I'm going to move this out of the way. And the first thing we're going to talk about is the molar heat of fusion. Sorry, this is being kind of weird. The molar heat of fusion is going to be the heat required to melt a liquid. So in this case for water, You've got the delta heat of fusion for water is going to be 334 joules over grams. Now, this value can also be given to you as a different constant. You could have it in um, a different number for kilojoules over grams. You could also have a different number for um, joules and moles. It just depends on what value is given to you. For the sake of ease, while I'm doing these examples, all the values here are going to be joules over grams. And so the value to, or the... the um, equation to calculate the heat gained or released is going to be Q equals mass times the heat of fusion. And you note that there's no change in temperature in this Q problem here. Normally we have Q equals MCAT. There is no change in temperature because, like we said on the first slide, when you are doing a phase change, you are not changing the temperature. There is no change. It's constant. So that won't be a factor in this particular um, situation. So for looking down here, I don't think any of these click. I think I have to fill it in. Um, if we're doing fusion, that's going to be when you are melting, and you're taking ice, and you're right down here, and you're going from ice to liquid. Note that it stays at a constant temperature right here on this line. That temperature is not changing while it goes from ice to a liquid. Then it becomes a liquid, and it heats up. Temperature changes, temperature changes, temperature changes. Um, solidification is going to be the heat released as one gram of liquid freezes. This is going to be the same value as the heat of fusion. It's just going to be a negative number. So depending on if you're going essentially up the phase change diagram or down the phase change diagram, heat of fusion would be going from a solid to a liquid. Solidification would be going from the liquid back down to the solid, and it would be found in the same exact place on your phase change diagram. Molar heat of vaporization, oh, hang on, there you go. Molar heat of vaporization is the heat required to vaporize one mole of a liquid. In this case, we're using grams for our constant. Um, then this is the molar, but in R, just to clarify, you can be given this value as a joules over moles, which is what this definition is referring to. For our ease, again, though, we're using joules over grams. So just be aware that you could use either one to clarify for that. Vaporization is going to be going from a liquid to a gas. So that's going to be found right here. And you note that this is a much longer line 
than when we were melting something. Um, and note again that the temperature for water is at 100 degrees and it stays constant that entire time that you are boiling off that water, you are vaporizing that water. And the equation for it is going to be Q equals the mass times the heat of condensation and vaporization, which is this value right there. And again, note, no change in temperature. Molar heat of condensation is going to be the essentially the inverse, the opposite of the heat of vaporization. So whatever the value is for heat of vaporization, if you were going the other direction and you were taking a gas and bringing it down to a liquid, it would be the same value, but it would be negative. And again, that takes place at this same spot right here on the phase change diagram. Okay, so looking at the whole phase change diagram kind of in its entirety, the horizontal parts of the curve are some sort of state change. Your temperature remains unchanged, but it's your potential energy that's going to be changing. So horizontal right here and right here, okay? Right there in those two spots, you have no change in temperature, but your potential energy is going to be increasing. So potential and this will also be potential. Remember, there is no change in temperature here. If you're looking at the sloped parts of the curve, that's where you have a temperature change. So we have a little tiny one down here, which would be up ice. We've got one right here, which is heating up water. And remember that that um, slope is going to be um, limited to the temperature, you know, for ice and gas. So in this case, it's 100 degrees distance right there. And then you have steam. And all three of these, this is going to be a change in kinetic and potential energy. But note that you do have that change in kinetic energy. And that's because you're heating up. Because you do have a temperature change. And remember, temperature change, energy, affects kinetic energy. We learned that in gas laws as well, and this is kinetic as well. So if you're looking at it as a whole, you've got change in kinetic and potential, then change in only potential, then change in kinetic and some potential, then only change in potential, and then change in kinetic. So you've got temperature change, no temperature change, temperature change, no temperature change, temperature change. And you could do problems going all the way from the bottom of that phase change diagram all the way up to the top. So let's look at one specific problem here. It says how much heat in joules is needed to melt 100, <coughs> excuse me, 150 grams of ice at zero degrees Celsius. So we are assuming that our ice is already at exactly zero degrees Celsius. It is already about to be um, melted. So we're not having to heat the or heat the ice up to zero degrees Celsius. That's where we're starting. So in this case, since we're undergoing, we're melting, that means we're undergoing that phase change, there is no change in temperature. So your Q value is going to be equal to Q. It's the mass times the heat of fusion. So if we plug in our values, you've got 150 grams. And I'm going to put the unit there for posterity's sake. And then we've got the um, heat of fusion for water, which we had on a separate slide, was 334 joules per gram grams gets canceled out. And when we solve it out, you're going to get 50100 joules of heat. Okay? Since you're melting it, remember that's a positive value because it's endothermic. So that that to the system in order to melt that um, ice. And the big thing to keep in mind, remember, this value could be different. You could, since it technically could be listed as the mole, it's a molar heat of fusion, you could also have that number be different and be um, um, joules per mole, in which case you would have had to take this number and convert it to moles before you plug it in. And theoretically, you should get, well, you should get the same exact answer. Okay, let's look at another one. This one says, how much heat in joules is needed to heat the liquid water from the above problem, or the problem um, right before this, to 20 degrees Celsius? So if you were to, first, we did this previous slide. First, we did that. Okay, so we started at zero degrees, we melted our ice, we have 150 grams of it. Now we want to take that water that we've, um, that we've created and we want to heat that water to 20 degrees Celsius. And this should be something that you should recognize because now we have a change in temperature. So now we're looking at Q equals MC delta T. And so now I know my mass still, it's still going to be 150 like it was on the previous slide. And then I know my value for 
my heat capacity, which is 4.184. And then my change in temperature, my final temperature is going to be 20 degrees Celsius. It doesn't give me my initial temperature in this problem, but if you remember, at the last problem, <clears throat> excuse me, we were melting ice at zero degrees. Once we finished melting, remember that temperature hadn't changed from zero degrees. So when we started this problem, it starts at zero. So it's going to be 20 minus zero. And so we're going to get a Q value of 12552 five, joules. And again, we're still putting heat into the system. This is endothermic. So if we wanted to, we could put those two together. And I could say, I want to first melt the ice, then I want to heat that water to 20 degrees Celsius, and you would simply add this Q value to the Q value on the previous slide, and you would have that whole process of everything that you did. Okay, this next one says, a 50 gram sample of ice is held at negative 10 degrees Celsius. Will 1,130 joules of heat be sufficient to raise that temperature of the ice to 0.00 degrees Celsius? So if we're looking at this, we do, we are raising the temperature of the ice. So remember, our temperature is changing. This isn't a phase change. So this is going to be Q equals MC delta T. Q equals our mass, which we have as 50. Um, our C value for ice is going to be 2.1. That was on a previous slide for your reference. And then our change in temperature, we want to go um, from negative 10 degrees Celsius to 0 degrees Celsius. So it's, if it's T final minus T initial, it's going to be 0 minus a negative 10, which when you do the algebra, it's going to be a positive 10. So Q is going to be, in this case, equal to 1050 joules. And so to answer our question, will 1,130 joules of heat be sufficient to raise that temperature? Yes, it will be, because this is how much heat is actually needed in order to do that. Okay, this problem, this is going to be putting two of them together. So now it says how many joules are released when 36 grams of steam at 100 degrees Celsius condensed to water and then is cooled to 50 degrees Celsius. So we're going to be doing two things here. First, we want to do the condensation. The second thing we want to do is we want to do um, our cooling of that water. So I'm going to start with the condensation. So I've got Q equals H of my condensation. Remember, there's no temperature change during that phase change, so we don't have to worry about plugging that in. So Q in this case is going to be equal to my 36 grams of steam times the value for the um, uh, heated condensation. Remember, it's a negative number from the slide prior. There we go. So when I go ahead and solve that out, I'm going to get negative 81,252 joules. Now, we're not done. That was simply the amount of heat that was required to condense that water, to take, it, to take it from steam to water. So now I want to do the second half of it, and that's cooling that water to 50 degrees Celsius. So now I've got my second Q problem, Q equals MC delta T. Remember, while I'm cooling it, I do have a change in temperature. My mass remains constant all the way through it. Remember, conservation of mass. So it's still 36 grams. My C value for water is 4.184. And now for my temperature change. We started where the steam finished condensing, which was at 100 degrees Celsius. So my final is going to be 100. Oops, sorry, final is going to be 50, excuse me. This is where we're trying to go, 50, and then my initial is going to be 100. So it's going to be 50 minus 100. Sorry about that. So then you get Q equals negative 7531.2 joules. Okay, just this, I mean, again, I made that error there. It's a really easy mistake to make. You just start plugging in the numbers. You really have to think that it's T final minus T initial. So if you're trying to eventually cool it to 50 degrees Celsius, that's my final. And then remember, it started at 100 because that's where you finished that phase change. So 50 minus 100. So now I have these two Q values, one here and one here. Those, that was the two processes. The first one was condensing it. The second one was cooling it. So in order to find the total heat that's going to be released, when I do these two things together, I'm going to add that up. And I'm going to get my overall Q value as negative 88783. That's an 8.2 joules of heat. And that's how much heat is going to be released total for both.
those processes combined. And keep in mind, I could do, this is the last example we have on this video, but I could do problems where I start at steam at a certain temperature, and I can take it all the way down to ice. I could first cool that steam, then I could condense it down into liquid, then I could cool the liquid from 100 to zero, then I could um, freeze it at zero degrees, then I could cool that ice even further down to a certain temperature. And you would just have a Q problem for all of those different segments, and then you would just simply add it together at the end. Okay, and just keep in mind, it's a negative value, that means it, it uh, released that heat, and if it's a positive value going up the phase change diagram, you are gaining that heat, okay? So that's all I have for you on this video. Hopefully you took good notes. And the best news is that this is the last video of the entire year. <laughs> So thanks for following along and come to class with questions. I'm not